guys. Welcome to Overcrest. I'm Chris. And I'm Jake. Did you forget for a second, too? Did no, you forget I, for a was second, a too? That was a pause for dramatic effect. Oh, well, it just messed me up. Threw me for a loop. And I am Jake. Jesus, dude. What's Welcome wrong? to what this it? week in news. <laughs> None of this is how we're supposed to do anything. What are you we doing? We can change it up. No. It's called Variety, Chris. This is episode 400 and something. You it's cannot... called Variety. This is <laughs> it's not a variety show. No. Stop oh. doing that. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so this is our news episode. We have yes. all sorts of crazy cool news to get through. Yep. Do we have voicemails as well? We do have voicemails. Do you want to do you want to do that right away? Should we do, do wanna... voicemails right away? Should we talk about what's going on with us? You've been working on stuff. I have finally been back out in the garage. I've been kind of winners really curmudgeonly is what I would call it. Winter this year is is has been tough. Why? I don't know, man. I just it's been extra tough. I just look outside and I go, Meh. Well, it's I I like working with the garage door open. Yeah. When you're you in the garage, you know what I really want? My next house will have, you know, like the old service bays where it's a glass. Yeah. And you can get them actually insulated where it's double pane glass. If you could get That's it where it's want. wiggly glass, that would be great. No. What you do is the electronic frosting. So you hit a button and Dude. it goes <laughs> How much is this garage door? I don't know, but I really want. It's got to like, be like several outrageous. of outrageous. It's got to be outrageous. I know expensive. the technology exists. I haven't actually looked and priced them out, but yeah. that is that's that's gonna be it. It's got to be outrageous. There's no way that's gonna be the setup. That's something that you have if you're the FBI. Why the frosted instant frosted LCD? Glass. Oh yeah, they do in their rooms, right? Yeah, it's not it's yeah. not for you. It's too expensive. Oh, 100 percent, I'm gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's just like having the garage door shut is kind of a bummer. You know, you can't see outside. It's kind of a dungeon. It's dark. You got like <laughs> LED lights. I yeah. don't know. It's just, it, all of it just sucks. Wow. And okay. everything's just kind of crammed in there. Uh huh. You know, I've got the Mercedes in there. I've got all the Overcrest merch in there. Yep. Like I can't even open the doors to the Mercedes. I have to crawl through the window <laughs> because there's so much Overcrest shirts and the crap in there. And then the troopers on the other side. And that's kind of a thing. And the wiring harness is all over the place. <laughs> and, and then... <sighs> Do you think this is like um, project overload is causing some sort of like apprehension? I don't think so. I'm used to having lots to do. That's not really the issue. The issue is the is the momentum of getting... It's like, you know when you're pushing a car and it's uh -huh. that first like... Yeah. Uh, yep. Once it's moving, you got momentum, right? And right. You can, and you can go. I think that's kind of the issue I, I was right. having. So did you start the push? I did. I, I started the push. I went out and I, I looked at the camshafts, which have been sitting on top of the Mercedes for months. Yes. Just laying there. Just do me. Put me in. Do me. Put me in. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. They've just been sitting there just waiting uh -huh. to be done. So tell us about these camshafts. I know we've touched on it before. Yeah. So but these, are, these are camshafts that are basically AMG profile spec. For rally. Yeah. They're race for, car. Race, race car. car spec. They're race cams. Yes. Which the car needs to breathe. Right now it does not breathe. Okay. It's got cams that are made for torque. Yeah. You know, because that's what you want when you're driving right. around town. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have to be. <laughs> I think I was saying it was, it's kind of like if you're driving a Mercedes, uh -huh. you just want to drive it around nicely, calmly. Yes. You don't want your wife to get upset. She's yes, doing 100%. her makeup in the passenger seat. Right. You can't be up in the high RPMs making all kinds of noise. She's going to bitch and whine at you. What are you doing? But if your torque's all down low, you're good to go. You're not making a bunch of noise. You're just yep. skating away. She's happy with her lipstick. You're, she's not poking herself in the eye. You know, that's what you want. It's not what I want. Right. You know, I want, I want unhappy. <laughs> I want loud, obnoxious. So we've got to change a few things. It Number one seemed like a very dumb design how the that head is built. Yes, yeah, so we have two things that I need to do okay. on the car. One is the gearing. The transmissions yeah. before we get into the camshaft story. Okay. The transmission is a four speed. Four speed. Which is not ideal. You know, you want four speed when you have like a high horsepower a turbo engine or something with a ton of torque and you can draw out the gears right. and because the wide, ratios are further apart. Right. You've yeah. got a wide torque band. The torque comes on early. And it peaks early, You're and then it go, carries then. through. That yes. works. So it works great. I don't have that. And it's getting worse now. Since you're adding cams, it's going to be more peaky. It's going to be much worse. So I got to figure <laughs> out a way to do something. So I looked up. I'm like, okay, what five speeds can I get? What works? Okay. And it just happens that the ones that work also work on a Pagoda. What is a Pagoda? That is the Mercedes that if you were an old man uh -huh. with a lot of money, uh -huh. that is a grandpa car. 
Okay. It is like a little bit smaller version of my car. It looks kind of similar with the headlights, but it's convertible. Okay. And it's kind of nice and everything's kind of dainty in it. Oh, I think I can picture this thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're okay. stupid. They look dumb. Okay. I don't think they're attractive <laughs> in any way. Okay. But super old dudes love the things. They love yeah. the cars. Absolutely are all over them. And they're like $80,000, $90,000. Oh, these are like collector yes, cars. Yes, big time. So which guess what bolts the, up to their motors? Yeah, so this transmission is also for that. And they're rare, plus it also shares similar. The car is basically, I know there was somebody that said, yeah, well, the it's totally different suspension than your car. I looked at pictures. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's got a really similar looking okay. design to, to my car, but it's super duper special. I mean, oh okay. yeah, it's just so. The greatest, anyways, though, it's just the greatest means thing that ever. These transmissions are very expensive. Yeah, I saw one on eBay for four thousand dollars. Yeah, and it looked like it had gotten dragged out of the Pacific Ocean. Nice. So, so that's it's just it's just not going to happen. What? Okay. Well, what about other like? So you want a transmission that bolts directly to the motor? No. The obvious choice. Plate, the thing to do is yeah. the rear end. Okay, I can but change I'm, the ratio globally. I, yes, there's I wanna, nothing. No, there's I, nothing. Okay, anything no, can work with work. Yeah, adapter Did, plate, throw out bearing, not thrust it. bearing. Nope, didn't. Not okay, doing it. our friend Colin told me a Chrysler Crossfire. So all the transmissions from like '85 on, yeah, have the the starter on the other side of the engine. Okay, which means the bump out in the area where the starter needs to go. Yeah, is wrong mm. for my car. So everything earlier, it's on Would the other it bolt side. Up? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think it does. Okay. So that's but, not an option. Rather for me. than doing that, yes, you could just change out the rear so end. So when I had the thing was a three speed, yes, and I was just going to lower it and just bomb around and just be a guy with an automatic single overhead cam, uh, twelve just basic bitch sure. Mercedes, okay. which is when it was white, that's all it was, right? Yeah. I lowered it on the Pentas, yep. replaced all the bushings, and down then the road, things got out of hand. Things like, <laughs> hey, it looks fast, so now it should be fast. And, hey, let's do this. Let's, oh, well, let's just put a hood in the motor in. Oh, let's 3D print intake manifolds yeah. so we can have carbs and ITPs and horns. Let's put the the same exhaust that AMG used. And the, it's just out of control. Right. So now I have to, so now when I put the manual transmission in, yeah. It is taller uh -huh. than the three-speed. Oh. And okay. when I put the differential in... I was going to say, you've changed out I the changed, differential before. The three-speed is super short, and it was miserable to drive. So I put a diesel rear end in it. Oh. So now it's tall gearbox, tall rear end. Can't you just... Do you still have that diesel or not diesel rear end? No, but, because I went on this thing where I wasn't going to keep things that I didn't uh, need. Ah, Okay. So I bought one. Is it like same thing? Same thing. It needs okay. seals and stuff like that. Yeah. So I bought the one I already had and and threw literally threw in the garbage you can. You threw it away? Threw it away. I was like, you know what? I've got too much shit. There's How much did you pay for this like other $250. one? $250. That's a lot to throw in the trash can. It sure is. Trust me. I know. And that <laughs> sucks. This, it, it's anytime you throw something away, you And it probably it. was in better There's gotta shape be like than a law. One. We'll just call it, it's now Cluel's Law. Yeah. If you throw it away, you're going to need it. Cluel's Law happens well, every time. Yes, but the alternative, and I know why you threw it away, is because it's going to sit in the pile or and, in and my leak. instance in the basement and, and take leak. up space. And leak and yes. stink. And, and you leak. might say, well, you know what? I'm going to sell it. It's worth selling. It's not worth the time. But you're going to maybe get to it when, right? Yep. So the way I look at it I is, okay, it. if I'm renting this space that it's taking up from like a storage facility? The four cubic what feet. Is, what does that cost? No, I'm saying like, you're not going to. I have the space for it. I could have put in the shipping container. Whatever. Yes. Anyway, but I just You have like, to like, that's how I, I'm talking about the Clues Law. I took it out, the Clues Law. The Clues Law is like, you have to basically calculate the cost of hanging onto it. Right. Which you th you don't think there's a cost to it, but there is. you can calculate. The I cost was really of close to the garbage it. can when I took it out. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> it was right there. I was like, yeah, what? It was convenient, it and it was leaking, and I'm like, yeah. Yes. So I put it in a plastic bag and chucked it. Because I can. also have probably thrown out a lot more than that. So I got to rebuild this gearbox or this di differential and put it in. Then I'll have a shorter four speed because it is really tall. Yeah, like driving 85 on the freeway is like. A dream, <laughs> and it shouldn't be <laughs> right. It That's really shouldn't be. Want. You know, I want to be like this gearbox is really short, but it's really fun to drive, so it's worth it. Yeah. Right now, it's really tall. Yeah, I drove it out in. Uh, it's a mo it's a momentum car right now. Idaho. Yeah, yep. it, the gearbox is really really tall. Yep. handles great. I'm surprised how well that thing handles. I was all over you. Why Why does that handle so well? It's got full independent double wishbone front suspension. And you went through every bush and everything. Is it all just stock rubber durometer? Yep. Okay. Yep. Rubber, but everything's new front and rear. Okay. 
everything. How wide are those tires? It's just an eight-inch wide wheel. Okay. It's nothing special. You know, it's an all-season tire. Huh. It is a brilliant car to drive. It is I really do, good. I, I honestly do not understand how it handles and sticks so well. <laughs> what do you well. think it weighs? I guess I don't know. I assumed it's heavy. It weighs tw- like 2,600 pounds. Okay. It's not it's, a heavy car. Yeah, lighter than I thought. It's the 60s. You know, it's old. I know, but still, it's like Mercedes well it's got built. got a bunch of sound deadening in it Triple stuff like that. metal, it has everything. collapsible steering. You know, it's got yeah. crumple zones. It's got. It's way safer than a 911 yeah. in, oh, in yeah, that way. Oh, no, I believe that. So it, it, it handles great. So I got to make it accelerate great as well. So that's one thing that I think people take for granted okay. in their car is their gearbox. Yes. When you buy a car and it's got a gearbox in it, it already has the gear set that's made for the car. Generally, yep. Generally. So you're like, your 901 gearbox, that short ratio gearbox that you have, yeah. was made to go with a 2.2. Yeah. doesn't have a lot of power. It's got right. a short gearbox. Yep. It's built so it, for it. It, fi- it feels fine. When you start to mess with things, yep. you start to wonder about your gearbox. And I think it's greatly underrated yeah. to think about your gear ratios and what you're doing. Well, you that's can make, why I rebuilt mine and put a taller fifth in it. It is the... It is just as important as doing displacement, cams, these yeah. other things. It is it is massively overlooked. So we're going to do that. We're going to put the rear end in. And, of course, like we talked about, the cams. Yes. So they're, they're, the cams that are in there are made for torque. I got these cams. They're AMG profile cams, whatever. So I go to take things apart. I pop the valve cover off. I'm all excited. I'm like, oh, I got to pull the radiator out so I get these cams out. Right, because they slide. They slide in and the out of the front. It's yes. not like you just take cam caps off, nope. which is how it normally works, and lift them out. That is something that wasn't invented yet, I don't think. Okay. Maybe it was, but Mercedes hadn't caught the drift or whatever the case we may do be. Things. Remember, the W114 is the first car that Mercedes built completely from scratch after World War II. Okay. Everything before that was a carryover. Interesting. So this is the first car that's completely all new technology. And they shoved a ton of it in there. Yeah. So this cylinder head is enormous. And it, it's it is difficult. Two piece. It's two piece. It's very difficult to pick up by yourself. It's extremely hmm. heavy. It's it's I have to stand in the engine compartment and it's, then and then heave it out and like it's hold not it. aluminum, is it? Yeah, it's all aluminum. Okay, but yeah. there's just a lot there. There's a lot to it. So you can take the cam box off. I'm like, great, I'll just take the I'll just Take the cam. Well, I hadn't gotten that far yet. No. Anyway, so okay, so I'm I'm getting ahead of First, myself. You take the cam. Cover I, so off I I take the valve, the valve cover. cover off and I look and I go, great, this is awesome. So I I undo all the rocker arms, loosen them all up, pull them all out, mm-hmm. get all that done. The rocker arms are what the cam pushes on. Correct to operate the valves. Yep. So it pushes on the rocker arm. The rocker arm rocks over yep. and pushes on the top of the valve stem. Right, and then you can adjust that uh, to for because you they can't be permanently touching. So otherwise you'd have like premature wear. So there's always well, a little gap. Well, not only that, then you have to be able to adjust lash. Yes. So you have to be able to Which adjust them. So there's an adjustment on them. they do have cam directly on bucket. And then you have to shim the bucket over the valve, which sucks because you literally have to remove cams every time you adjust your valves on a direct cam on bucket design. Yeah. So that's like solid lifter problems. Not quite, A lot quite, of solid yes. lifters have that type of system. Hydraulic yeah. lifters, I don't think need as much. Well, hydraulic lifters, you don't adjust. Yeah, period. they're just always in the right spot. They're always doing their, well, yeah, doing their happy, the happy thing. Anyway, okay, so I'm, I got this. I'm looking at the caps. I'm like, got all the rocker arms. I'm like, oh, this is great. I take, there's two caps on the front of the. They're like plugs in the front. Well, it's just like three bolt caps. You take them off, and then you can unbolt the camshafts. Right, from the and ca- in from theory, the timing then, gear, you, you would just, just slide, slide them, out. them out the front. They don't fit. But. <laughs> <laughs> so why are those cap things there? So you can take the timing gears off. Oh. So it goes out. I'm looking at it. I go, I, I, I had a moment uh-huh. where I went, I wonder if I can cut a hole in the firewall oh, God. to pull the cams out. Uh huh. I had that moment uh-huh. because I'm like, I do not. I've already had this stuff apart once. The timing's a nightmare. Well, your the first tensioner system's a nightmare. Would be to, you'd have, I have to drop the motor. I have to pull the motor. That would be my first thought. Well, or take the cylinder head off. Right. So I actually split the cam box and the cylinder head because it's a two-part thing. Right. Which so is I split cool. them off, and then I go, oh, I can't get it off because the manifolds that we made are in the way. So I had to take the carb manifolds off, oh. and it became a whole thing, right? Instead of just being like, I'm going to pull these cams out, yeah. now I'm – so I unbolt everything, and I'm pushing on the cam box, and it's like – it's not flat, so now I'm to the point where I'm like, oh no, do I need, should I just take the whole cylinder head off? Well, something's warped. Right. And it was bolted down. So you can bolt it down to true if you want to. Right. That's what I'm wondering. But now I'm kind of like, was, well, is the top of the bottom half of the cylinder head also I don't warped? know. So what I did or is I ordered profile. a 
a steel machine flat edge. But yeah, flat surface. Flat surface, straight yep. edge, so that I can put it across the cylinder head and get and a feeler see. gauge and measure. I don't know yet. So that's to be remains to be seen. So anyway, I got the cams out. Okay. Uh, I took the split the cam box, got the cams out, threw them on the workbench. Yep. <laughs> and I set them next to the new cams, and I go, "Wow, those lobes look significantly smaller than the stock cams." That doesn't make sense. Because... No, it doesn't. And and I'm trying to figure this out, and I don't understand. And I'm measuring it, and the lobe is is shorter by three mil, three millimeters shorter. That seems significant. That is a lot. That's a lot of lift. I can see. Right. I'm and looking at it. I can see there's more duration. Sure. So it. it's it's a wider lobe. Yep. So the valve stays open longer. longer. But it should push it out further. In my too. mind, yes. But right. these are reground cams. Okay. So how do you gain more duration and lift on a, by regrinding a stop cam by taking material off? Okay. How do you get more duration and lift? Uh, do you have to, is it the whole rocker system? You have to move the lobe center. Move the lobe center. So you have to, where, the, where it rotates, you then have to, you, you're grinding oh. more off. Okay. So then you have to adjust the valve. Uh, the, I'm sorry, adjust the rocker. Yeah. To take up the slack that you have made when you've reground it. So yes, it is a smaller lobe, okay. but it is a larger duration. Yeah. So you take up the slack by adjusting the rocker arm. So it should have more lift than the stock cam. It still doesn't make sense to me. I know it's because the fulcrum of I, the it, rocker. Is the same place. Yeah, but what you're doing is you're moving it closer to the the bot. Like when the valve is closed, uh-huh. it's there's more gap in between where it was before. So there's a larger gap than the stock cam. I would have to look between at the rocker and the cam. So you have to adjust the rocker up to meet it. And when you sure. do that, when the lobe comes around the other side, uh-huh. the rocker is then higher. Uh-huh. So when it comes around, it it is so actuating. You, you can adjust the position of the fulcrum. Of the rocker. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're adjusting the outer edge of it. where it Because my rocker, is, this is getting too, almost I, too I detailed know, I'm, for voice. I'm frustrated because I, I understand what you're saying, but that doesn't, I can't understand how that works. So when, I'm going to use hand signals now for anybody that's watching. Okay. Okay. So I will have, describe his hands. You, <laughs> <laughs> you have the top of the, the rocker arm. This is the cam yes. right here. Okay, it rolls this is, on the this top is stock. of the rocker. Yes. When I remove material, it is now like this. Right. Yeah. You you have less lobe. L- less lobe. But what do I have to do then? All then I have move to do the is rocker. do this, do this uh, to meet it. And when I've done this, uh-huh. even though yeah. I've removed material, when the lobe comes around the other side, uh-huh. this is higher. Right. So it's got a higher starting point than it did before. Right. So even though you've removed material from the lobe of the cam, yeah. you've made up the slack in the rocker arm, and it, it's going to start opening uh, sooner and further on the on with the new cam. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So technically, you could adjust the rocker arm really tight on a stock cam and get a little bit more lift, but this way you've got no because you have thermal expansion. Yeah, I'm. Just, I'm not. It's not a good idea. None of this is not, not doing that is not a good idea. Nobody should ever do that. What? I'm just. I still because you can't change the pivot point of the rocker. No, but you're changing its travel. Sure. You're changing where it starts. But then... <sighs> you want to come over and I'll show you? I don't know. I'm at least going to have to look at a diagram. Okay, okay. Well, look at my stories. I did a little thing that I... You know what I, I'm talking about? Like, think of a teeter-totter? It's, like, not, it's not in the middle. The rocker's not in the middle. It's on the edge. Yeah. But this is something that you do on, like... No, a, I, I, I understand. Like, this is this is the way you do it. This it is, is the way you the do it. process. Yeah, so you've okay. essentially moved the... I can't explain. You're it just anymore moving the height of the lever, S- somewhat. Yes. No, you're not moving the height. You're moving how tall the lever is in relation to where it's operating on the lobe. Right. Because you're not you're taking material away mm-hmm. to change the cam profile mm-hmm. and to make up for the material you've taken away. Mm-hmm. You have to make it up in the rocker. So you adjust the rocker. You adjust the valve to be closer to the material that you've taken away. Yeah. We can say it as many times as we want. I'm still going to have not, to see a visual. That's fine. I'm, it's not my problem. Your tiny little brain can't <laughs> um, You also were like grinding and weighing yes. these rockers. So they, what uh, is that about? So the rocker weighs 80 grams. Sure. 80, 90 grams. They all weighed sure. about 90 okay. grams, 80, 87 grams. Uh-huh. And that weight yeah. is thrown around every time the cam 
opens the valve and closes the valve. Sure. It has to move that weight. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Add that up. Sure. It adds up. Okay. Especially when you're trying to do something extremely fast, uh-huh. you have what's called inertia. And Correct. weight causes inertia. These are very small, very, very small things. Else. Yes, you call it get valve float. Yeah. If the inertia of the weight that you're trying to move exceeds the ability for the valve spring mm-hmm. to do its job. You know what? If, what's the valve spring's job? Just to return the valve closed. Returns the valve closed. Yep. And if it and if the valve spring isn't strong enough to return the weight of the rocker arm right. and the valve closed, then it's gonna float. That's called valve float. And Correct. what is that? Bad. Bad. Because <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Bang. Bang. You, you yeah. actually. Contact I, piston usually. Contact piston. Not great. I yes, think I actually might have heard that once when I was like, ah, let's see what this thing's revs out. Let's, oh, what yeah. have you revved it to? Uh, I've revved it out to about 7,200. Okay. And the valves, I think, started to float around seven. Okay. 7,200. Somewhere in there. And so this is an interference head, we oh, would yeah. call it. Oh, yeah. Oh, Big yeah. time. Uh, so yeah. now I'm like, I'm also concerned, like, I. I want to do like a compression test, uh-huh. but I've already taken it apart. Uh-huh. So I can't like run the motor to do a compression test. I can't, mm. I can turn the starter over maybe, but the chain is still in there. So if it mm. grabs the chain, it's going to maybe, mm-hmm. ah, yeah. yeah, don't do that. So I thought maybe I would do a leak down. Uh huh. Is So I ordered a leak down test. Okay. And then if the leak down test comes back bad, uh-huh. I'm going to pull the motor. I'm going to, I'm going to re-ring it and I'm going to redo Jesus the bearings. Jesus Christ, man. You have to. What are we doing with this car? What do you mean we? I know. What are you fucking doing my with car. this car? It's my car. I'll do whatever I want. Okay. There. <laughs> a lot of work going into this thing. Of course, but I enjoy it. Okay. You know, I enjoy it. And I, if the car is ever to get sold, yes. I can't in my right mind not fix this. Because my one of the things I do when I get frustrated with something and I'm working on a car, I'm like, this fucking sucks. God, I could just cut this corner. Uh-huh. No one would ever know. Yeah. Except the next guy. Yep. The next guy, it, the next guy, that ambiguous man is that a friend. poor guy. He's a friend of mine. Is he? The next guy is a friend of mine. Well, he gave me money for my car, so he's probably somewhat of a friend, right? He's at least an acquaintance. I don't know. I just see, <laughs> I don't want to fuck that guy over. So if, yeah. I, if I feel, like I felt when I was turning it over, that maybe one of the cylinders felt like a little weak. Uh-huh. You know, when you're turning it over and you're building okay. compression, and, and I'm like, mm, that feels... Maybe not as strong as the other ones when I'm going around, which could be there's not That's a lot of totally oil in, in there. Head. Yeah, it, is maybe that it is. Cylinder dry is that? But I need I now that I've thought about it. Oh God, I yep. need to know. Yeah, I need to know. Okay. I got to know. So what is this? What do you want to be able to rev this thing to with the cams and the lightened now? Uh, uh, seven rockers. I think seven okay. would be nice. Just keep Sixty eight right hundred or which seven. Is- yeah. there's there's a company that makes heavy duty valve springs and stuff, and I'm like, eh. yeah, I because cut 10%. you can and you can also do dual. Like nested valve springs. I've done on that on some motors. cars. Yeah, yeah, I've done that. Do you know what else? So besides valve float and inertia overcomes valve spring pressure. Do you know what else can overcome valve spring pressure? Compression, boost. Ooh, yeah. We'll I talk suppose. about that in our next episode. Ah, yeah. okay. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's all that I've got going on. That's it. We're gonna have a blizzard on Tuesday. Everything's fine. Yeah. Um. Well, you are a one lucky sob. Why? Because you forgot to mention your timing chain. Oh my God. <laughs> How could I? Okay. All right. This is, I cannot believe it. So I, when I was building this before the rally, yes, I'm putting this together a day and a half before I left. You're down to the wire. I had my buddy Bjorn from Broadway Auto Tech. Yep. Genius tech. Really awesome guy. Great cool job. Guy. If yep. you're in Minnesota, uh-huh. in the Minneapolis area, yeah. Bjorn at Broadway Auto Tech. Yeah. That's your guy. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. a great guy. He's super awesome guy, super knowledgeable, very kind, fair, trustworthy. Anyway, he came over to the shop. They work on anything. But you he know also, I bought my four-liter car from him? I do. Yeah. I do. He, he's very fair, very awesome, and he loves old Mercedes. Yeah. So uh, I had him over to the house. Uh, we hung out on Friday night. All, all the Friday night crew that I hang out with sometimes was there. Yes. Was at your house. Was at my house. Everybody's packed in the there. Mercedes. Jesse made spaghetti, and we had nice. she made like cheesecake from scratch. And do you eat a I, lot of spaghetti? I buttered I feel everybody like up. Every time I'm over, it's spaghetti. Uh, it is the best thing that Jesse makes. <laughs> <laughs> so when she, so when people come over, that's that, that's, that's what she that's, makes. That's, yeah, okay. I'm trying to eat it less because there's a lot of carbs there. Yeah, I can tell if I eat it as much as she would like me to eat it, I will be a fat guy. <laughs> so I try to like tone it back a little bit. Total, total random point. But do you, have you ever made your own pasta sauce? You don't realize how like 
bad. Me? Pasta sauce is too. No, Jesse. Every time she does it, she okay, makes the yeah. bolognese I make, from scratch. I make my own pasta sauce. She too. makes it from like eighty percent lean meat too. Oh, okay. Like it is no. Like when I make pasta sauce, it's like how many sticks of butter. Yeah. You know, all the salt. Oh, in yeah. It. Like, everything. Anyways. Okay. All good. Yeah. So, Fat absolutely. Guy Spaghetti time, fat working on the car. Okay, so, we're putting everything together. And he's, <laughs> one of the pain in the ass things is this tensioner. So, Bjorn's fiddle fucking around with this tensioner thing. And we get it in. We get it together. We're this about the, to put the chain together. Yep. And then the chain I bought is supposed to come with a um, a key. Right. Because the, the chain is not one piece. So, here's what you do. You have to link it. It's like a motorcycle or a if bicycle If you are going chain. to chain, if you're going to do the chain on this car yes. or any other car with a chain, one thing yes. you can do is you, you cut the chain. Yep. You link the new chain onto the old chain. With a master link. With a master link. And you rotate the engine around. Okay. So, the chain goes all the way through. Uh-huh. And then you clip it again on the top. You take the old chain off and clip it on top. That way, you yes. don't have to yeah, take yeah, anything yeah. apart. Yep. You just rotate gotcha. the chain all the way through. And I learned, I learned how to do this. Long time ago on an old 380 SE single row chain, just I was. You have like, to catch it at the bottom somehow, though. No, you do not. Oh, because you're using the existing chain to pull it through. Correct. Ah, yeah, clever. exactly. So you rotate the thing all the way through, and it, it saves you a bunch of time. So I do all that, and I go to put the link together, and the new chain is supposed to come with a key and circ clips. Yeah. So E-clips. the master link. Master link. Again, I'm, I'm just, just thinking, thinking. Everybody looks at a chain, you see it. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. You, you, I, I think of uh, motorcycle chains is what sure. usually I'm Even as on. a kid, everybody listening had a bike and they had a chain. They changed the chain on the bike. It's the same yes. exact However, concept. you drive a pin out and then you can drive a new pin in and it's pressure held. This is held on with e- little E-clips, which are yes, little, little tiny little circlips, clips, but it the has size of the tab. Yeah, now, you, so when you're, um, when you're master clip, think of, your master link. So yep. you have one chain got, link with two prongs correct. or shafts and you put yep. it through and then there's another basically plate on the side yes. that goes. And then beyond that, on those prongs or shafts is where those eclipse go. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that is where the eclipse go. Got it. No time for news. It's going to be awesome. That's fine. I'm going to save all the news for a different day. Um, <laughs> or people can just have a little bit of a longer episode. I, I don't really care. We'll see. So we'll anyway, see so I put there. this thing and I turn around and I go to get the eclipse. They're not in the box. They don't exist. When, when you're originally doing this before the rally. Yes, there was no okay. eclipse. So Got someone it. had returned this. Yeah. And didn't, they were like, ah, the, the next the guy. Fuck the next the guy. The next guy. So whoever that is, fuck you. Oh. Yeah, fuck you. Not I a hope friend. I hope that guy steps in a pothole Not filled a with friend. water. Ooh. That's what I hope. And okay. he has a wet, one wet foot so all that's, day. So that's an equal I hope, outcome to the sin, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he has a wet foot all day for an entire day. I hope it happens in the morning. Ooh, is it like a stinky? Yeah, just it's just like it's the yellow or it's yellow water. Yes, it's it yellow water. Be. It is a puddle filled with urine. Yes, that's what he, the, the guy walking the dog before him. Yep. He's like, anyway, fuck that guy for no clips, including my eclipse. So, so I I dig around two bucks. I find some some. I find some that 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 well, will that probably is a bad work. Place for that. I, I like it though. It's he has a Christmas ornament that someone sent us made yep. out of. Um, little nuts. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a snowflake, but it's metal and right next to his microphone. Yeah, I love it though. Okay. It's, I keep bumping with my hands. So you find some clips. I do. I find two little E clips that are like stainless steel. They're not like uh-huh. hardened steel. Okay. And I go, I have to these leave. Are, these are precision. Yeah, they're 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 small. But I'm saying like, they're like are the size they of the, the exact no. right size? No, they're not. So I have okay. to crush them a little bit. Oh God. Yep. And I go, I got to go. <laughs> I gotta go. I felt really, really <laughs> oof, dedicated to going. I yeah. felt like I had to go. Yeah, no. And where else am I gonna find this? It's like I'm leaving. I'm fucking yeah. leaving. Yeah. I'm not fucking leaving. Except I am. Right. I am yes, leaving. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, wait, I have a sound for that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think like would hardware stores and their little bins have maybe I did not have time. You're right. I was because like, it's not like you I was can go and stop leaving. along the way. Because it's in the middle of the motor. Like the you motor. Can, yeah. Was, I mean, I, whatever. Anyway, so I put them on. I go. Ah. <laughs> cross your fingers cross and fingers. your toes. And, and I remember else. being in Nevada being like, yeah, I guess those Eclipse. It would have failed by out. now. It would have failed by now. Yes. So I get the car. All, obviously, everybody knows what happens now if, they're, if they can put two and two together. Yes. I'm, I'm rotating this motor around and I look. They're gone. The clips are gone. The clips are fucking gone. They're gone. This is thing is- the uh, here was my question: Is that outer chain link plate that I talked about still on? Yes, held on by magic. I what? I don't know. I have no idea. Wow! I, I just I, that makes I zero it. logical sense. Okay, so 
I you you know. push it and it just slid right out? Yep. What? <laughs> I was like, maybe there's a lot of tension keeping a it little, together. But I could friction. push it out with my fingers. Wow. Unreal. Wow. Unbelievable. 7,200 RPM. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Lucky. I don't know. I do not understand how it stayed. Lucky, son of a bitch. I, I, someone was like, buy a lottery ticket. I'm like, why? I'm guaranteed to lose. That's all my luck for like 10 years. Yeah, you used it all. My luck with anything. I make mistakes. I'm a forgetful person. Uh-huh. I've got massive ADHD. <laughs> I like, I just like, I, I don't even remember why I walked into a room half the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm very no, forgetful. That's a thing. That's a thing. And uh, it's, it's a miracle that anything I do stays together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I tell you all kinds of stories of shit I forgot. Oh, oh, dude, there's another thing I have to so do yeah, on the Mercedes. So yeah, buy all his cars that he's worked on. <laughs> I forgot got to put a bolt in the bottom of the caliper on the car the bottom bolt of, of this the, mercedes of this mercedes and which i noticed oh, out in right. idaho when we were at our rental I, house it was fine driving forward because the, the wheel turns <laughs> uh-huh, and the it caliper holds it in place, and holds yeah. it in place yeah and then you went to reverse and then i went to reverse and it just this. backed the caliper right off we were the going thing. to the film fest i believe I don't you were backing what I out, doing. and I you were like, "Set up!" And I'm it was like, like "What clanking is going all on outside?" Because so the caliper was like go, moving up. Just so then flopping. I'm like, "Okay, what am I gonna do? I gotta, I gotta put a <laughs> bolt in here." So I take one of the lug bolts off, uh-huh. which, of course, yeah, I, I broke a. I, oh my god, that's right, <laughs> guys! You don't understand. Like, I try, <laughs> you don't even. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to tell everybody how many mistakes I make because I think it's important that, well, that people and understand. Also, you you have already proven that you are addressing them. Yeah, of course, and right. and, it, and it, I've pushed through, and it's caused me to be extremely resilient. Sure. Most of the stuff doesn't phase have me. Have a anymore. lot of patience. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of resilience over here. I was on the I was on the rally and in drive. Driving on some gravel road, it's like all of a sudden I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm like, holy shit, this gravel road is fucked. <laughs> and then I'm looking around, I'm like, huh, it's kind of no, fine. It's not. So then I get out and I look around and I kind of look at the car. I'm like, yeah, I just I don't understand. Start driving. I'm like, okay, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Finally, I get out uh-huh. and I go and I look at the back wheel. Uh huh. And it has I put studs on. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Stud conversion. So instead of bolts, you have and studs. With four of the five studs had uh, were either broken <laughs> or had no nut on them. What? And this had been going on. Oh my god! There's a vibration that I couldn't figure out because I I just never torqued them down. Loctite torque. No. Eh. Well, the studs were fine. They bro- I did those right. You know, those oh, broke the, off. Oh, so it was, was just the dude, lug nuts. I was in such a fucking hurry. This, you realize this has happened to us before when we've been driving in yes. Wisconsin. Yes. And you're like, oh, my wheel bearing. You should see my me. My wheel bearing's toast. You should see and me I out there. Out. <laughs> and I'm like, you should see me out there with lug nut falling off. I will go. I know they're tight, but I'm going to walk around and tighten every lug nut in every car I own. I just walk around and I check to make sure that they're tight. Just, because w- Yeah, whenever. Just whenever. Yeah. It's just something just I do every once in a while. You know what? I should check so Anyway, those. So there was that. So then I had to take like a one <laughs> lug nut off another wheel and another one off another wheel. So I did the whole rally on three lug nuts, or three <laughs> lug bolts on one of those wheels. Uh, so, so anyway, so then I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, how can I put a bolt? bolt. I don't have a caliper bolt right. for this thing. So what I do, I'm like, you know what? I got it. Here's the problem. Here's what the trouble that I had when finding uh, lugs for those wheels. They're, okay. they're ball seat instead of cone seat. Yeah. Yep. Nobody uses ball seat. Um, they don't. Okay. They fucking don't. No, I have, I have a bunch Great. of ball seat. Great. Go into O'Reilly and, and buy some, some, some longer uh, ball seat. Okay. You just, no, you can't. So I can get cone seat. So I bought some cone seat ones. Fill the, sh- fill the fucking wheels up with those. Right. And just torqued them down. Good to go. Good to go. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. What's. <laughs> What's the, Have what's you the, changed those since? Uh, I don't even know. Maybe. Okay. Make a note of that. No, I haven't. I got to redo all those. I got to put new studs in and redo it all. I can't even get in the car. The door, fucking, I can't even get in it. You know what? We need to tell people to do then. Wait, hold on. What? Let me finish the story. I was going to say, but so you can get in the car is you should buy more merch. So you have room to do that. Yes, please. God, <laughs> buy it all. Um, so I, I'm like, I need to put a bolt in the caliper. This is not yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah. I grab one of the, 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 the wheel studs. It's the only That's thing I loose. can buy. <laughs> It's the only thing I can find that is the same thread, thread, and, pitch, thread yeah. pitch and diameter yeah. on the whole car. I can't find anything else. I'm trying to think of things that I can Should take off like the car. Trunk lid bolts. Anything. And... Can't think of anything. It's too big. And, and so <laughs> I, I, I put it on there. I'm like, this is great. I start to tighten it down. What happened? Snap. Just think about what could happen. 
because it's a conical shaped fucking oh, bolt. Oh no! It, it rode itself into the caliper and broke the ear of the caliper. Yep. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> so I ended up like going to the oh. hardware store and getting one that fit. And I took the little piece of the caliper. And, and you I, put it in there. And I held it in there. Yep, just and, so you and can work against it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just so there was something there. It's still there. I looked. Oh, it's God. still there. So that's that's my story, guys. That's Wow. So if I can make it, <laughs> you can make it. If I can make it. Where are we making it? You, anywhere. Okay. Anywhere. If I can. Dude, I fuck up so much. I screw up so much shit. But I. You'll make it. You'll 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 get there. Uh -huh. You'll push through. Okay. It's, what I'm learning though is you need to go home and change that caliper. You need to change out all of your lug nuts. A, yeah, <laughs> you need to. <laughs> There's a lot of things that need to be done in the car, which will happen in the summer. Yeah, that um, makes sense. And usually, uh, by the time I get something pretty well sorted out and there's nothing wrong with it, then I sell it. Perfect, because I have already fixed everything, and that's pretty much how it goes. There What's been go. going on with you? I was on vacation last week. Yeah. Good for you. Was it warm? I hope not. It actually wasn't. Yeah. It was unseasonably That's, cold. It's always cold in, in Texas. South Padre, Texas. Yep. No, it was supposed to be like 80s the entire time. And everyone there is like, how do you enjoy our damn cold? Go like they were all very upset. Yeah, but you're it still was in very shorts. unseasonable. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. It got up to 84 one day. Oh, that was beautiful. great. Yes. But I went and saw SpaceX. Yeah. The uh, star base, they call it down there, because that's where they launched the big starships or will be. It's so starships. wild. We're, we live in a Dude, time where there are going to be starships. I posted on Instagram. I was like, I'm convinced we are now living in the future. Yeah, more than ever. More it's than just, ever. it's wild. AI, and starships. And what I love about at least that place down there, there's no visitor center. There is security, but there's no fences. You walk right up because there's so much going on constantly. Have they so many contractors coming in and they're building things? There was like hundreds of people there and cranes and they're just building new things that they're like, yeah, I don't know, come and go as you want. Like, we don't care. It's not a security concern right now because we have all these people coming and going anyways. It sounds like a government facility. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, not at all. This is private. And that's what I also love was like how long... Has it been that NASA, since we went to the moon, and even, I mean, they, kudos to them. It only took us from when did yeah. JFK we're, say we're going to the moon and then yeah. we did it? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. But. At great risk. At great risk. You're right. But since then, NASA hasn't really done much. Hmm. And it's taken Elon, like, how many years to come from. NASA got a lot of their funding pulled, to be fair. I know. It, it, yes. But that's. Government, right? Yep. I love that it basically has come down to a single individual who's like, you know what? I want to build rockets and go to Mars. And you know what's interesting is and one of the seeing reasons. Seeing it in person, though, I'll just say, it was just so like, holy crap, this is real. Big. This is big yes. and it's real and it's going to happen. Yeah. I, one of the coolest things about SpaceX and the reasons why it existed is if I've listened to Elon talk about this on some podcasts and stuff like that, is one of the reasons why he's doing it is not necessarily to get to, my, to get to Mars. He sees, as a, sees it as a way to inspire humanity, mm -hmm. to, to dream. It is inspiring. And, and I think that is one thing that's really important about exploration of any kind. Yeah. Is it involves dreaming. What will this be like? Sure. What could we do? How could we, what, what will happen if we do this? What will we see? Right. And that drive, uh, that inspiration to light a fire under exploration for humanity it's great. 10 out of 10. It's great. Would, would, be, even, would be inspired again. Even if we completely fail and we don't make it to Mars or even the moon, the things and technological evolution that's happened through that pursuit, it's just crazy when you go down there. And it's like everything is basically custom built. Like there was this massive, like big transporter rover thing with like, I swear, 250 wheels on it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. And I have a video of it going by right yep. by. They're like, oh, can you back up your rental car a little bit? We need to turn this massive thing. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's all built specifically for this by SpaceX. It's yeah. wild. Totally it's, wild. It's incredible. Yeah. The only other thing of note is I was literally within like 100 yards of Mexico at one point on the trip. Like okay. It was way down there. Okay. And Mexico gets different cars than we do. All right. Which is obvious. But I remember I was in the Target parking lot. We were picking up some meds for the kid. And I was like, what the hell is that thing? What is that? There's an MG, a British MG badge on this new sedan. Okay. And it was some MG that they import into Mexico. 
And the guy was just driving across the border to come up to Target. And I didn't know MGs were still made. I didn't either. Yeah. It was just wild. Hmm. That's all. That's all. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I think it's good. Yeah. Um, If you want to hear even cooler stuff, because that really wasn't that cool. But if you want to hear cooler stuff. Yes. Like exclusive content. Yes. On Friday, we have an awesome history story. And guess what? I do more of those that you people haven't heard. Ooh, you people? You people. Ooh. You people who are not Drivers Club members. Yes. If you head over to overcrestproductions.com slash drivers club, then you too can get access to exclusive content. You can get early access to merch. You can get early access to registration applications yep. for the rally. You can get all sorts of awesome benefits, bonuses, uh, access to Chris's prints, t-shirts, yeah. etc. Very just, good I'm deal. I'm just looking at, okay, so I just want to say thanks to these people. Yep. These are the new, new uh, Drivers Club members. Kyle Statsman, Eric Stevens, Ben Chester, Throttle Grotto, Shane Pavanetti, great, Throttle Grotto, great YouTube channel, by the way, if you need something to check out. Fabio Vasallo. Who is it? Who is it? Uh, Throttle Grotto. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Sarah White, Dave Cohen. I was on that channel. Christopher Davis, David Murray, Maurice Martinez, Ian Higgins, Chris Hobart, Matthew McIsaac, Dylan Poole, Zach DiPiro, Baylor Olson, Andrew Schrader, Fred White, Stephanie Smithwick, uh, Mike from Stanceworks, Alex Skegan, Sid Smith, Richard Fisher, Chris Seeley, Tom, just Tom. Tom. Justin Johansson. Wait, is it Tom from MySpace? No, it, it Do you is get the not. joke? Those are, uh, those are everybody in the last uh, month and a half. I can't thank you guys enough for supporting the show. You guys are, you guys are incredible. I love you all. I would hug all of you, and I, I love you even more than I love the next guy. How do you like that? I like it. I like that. There you go. All Better right. friend than the next guy. If you can't find the driver's club, there are like five different redirects. Uh, redirects you, you just had it. You, you can go to overcrisproductions.com slash whatever dash Chris dash is dash looking dash four. You made it so the 404 just redirects to the driver's club, didn't you? No, that would have been smart and lazy. Oh. I had several people tell me to do that. Yeah. It's much more silly to just have like five different redirects that do it in different ways. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of news. Well, we have voicemails. Oh, hold on just a second. We do indeed have a, a voicemail, and this one is for you. And guys, I apologize for um, the voicemail is full. So when I got here today, it had 15 missed calls and... One voicemail. Their voicemail is full. Oh. So I apologize for that. Well, we, have, we can encourage people to call back now that you've cleared it out. Yeah. What's the number? Right? What's our number? Uh, 612 Lego Belt. <laughs> Stop doing that. Nobody it knows works. what that means. It works. It do, nobody knows what that means. Uh, let me look it up right now. All right. Let's, let's play this while you look it up. Okay. Hey, Jake. This is a podcast episode idea. Uh, I want to hear about the Vapor Carburetor, which is new Charles Pogue supposedly drove this like 1976 uh was it an ltd like 1400 miles on 10 gallons of gas or something and then apparently he was doing these um classes on how to build your own out of like a little cast iron pot kettle thing and then supposedly some men in black suits came and he didn't take their offer to stop doing the classes and they killed him oh. i think he, i think he blew up in a either a house fire or a car crash or something and then his house or his little workshop also burned down. Anyhow, love to hear it. Uh, peace out. Conspiracy. I like it. Yeah, that sounds like something. I, you I have up. written that one down to look into on my future episode idea list. All right. So what is the what is the phone number that people? 612-584-0235. We should just put that up on the. Uh, if we get, we're going to get all kinds of spam calls if we put it up on the website. It's been on the website the whole time. Chris. Oh, it has? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Well, then people can look it up there. Overproductions.com slash contact. Oh, well, there you go. Call us. Leave us a voicemail. You want to be on the show? You got a topic or anything exactly else you want to talk about? exactly what it says right on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Literally, you were reading it. Why am I, why am I even here? Leave us a voicemail for the show. Drop by. Yep. Why, why am I even here? We'll just, everybody can just go to the website and. Never listened so, to uh, at the beginning of the episode, we said this is an awesome, fun news episode. I think it was awesome and fun. I don't think we need to do any news. You don't want to do news? Let's, do, let's pick one thing. What do you want to do? Let's pick one of these articles to do. I, I have one. You have, you have a good one? I have, I have a good, good one for... What? <laughs> All right. This, what? 
Let's do, okay, let's do two so I don't have to just start with this. Now nah, let's just do it. Okay. I'm going to explain, <laughs> I'm going to explain a product to you. Okay. And this is a new product. In the automotive industry. Uh, you, it's available to anyone. Okay. And I want you to tell me what the car part is. Oh, okay. Uh, based on what? Based on what I'm saying. Based on what is I'm saying. Is this like the sales description? Yes. Okay. Regular sized. Uh-huh. Overall length. 8.6 inches. Okay. Usable length, 7.5 inches. Interesting. Circumference is a minimum of 5 inches. Uh-huh. With a maximum of 8.5 inches. Girthy. Available firmness. Oh. Soft. Uh-huh. Medium. Uh-huh. And firm. Uh-huh. Is made with body safe, platinum cured silicone, and cosmetic grade mica. Oh, so body safe. Each model is hand poured. No two are alike. What it is for hell? novelty. Wait, I thought I was supposed to guess. Yeah. I, you haven't guessed what it is yet. Oh, I thought you were telling me the answer. No, it's, uh, it, it it's is for novelty, novelty use only. Oh, it is. Okay. okay. Novelty use only. Novelty use only. Uh, I'm going to actually share it and on the screen. Are you looking at the thing? Poured. No. Go on ahead and uh, I'm going to share the share my screen right now. Oh, I get it. Okay. I'm looking, waiting. Yeah, yeah have a look. It's... A transmission. Yeah. That is a Volks or I'm sorry, a Volkswagen R32, a Nissan R32 transmission. Wait, is this actually a dildo? It is a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> it began with a sketch sent to us via Twitter. We transformed Rimmed. the sketch into a- Not for her pleasure, but for uh, the. I, yeah. We transformed the sketch into a faithful reproduction sculpt of the R32 Skyline's transmission. With a meticulous attention to detail, uh-huh. the technical and mechanical build of a transmission made this scope an incredibly challenging product. Wow. End result speaks for itself. Um, I also found this image as well. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is one guy's collection. Wait, that's actually just a transmission. That's, yeah, okay. but it, it, this one's got to be really hard to clean off after you're done with it. Yeah, is my is my wow is my yeah. guess. And then there was uh, also also oh this. God, I thought this you might so thought you might be interested in oh this one. Maybe this is they make she makes custom ones. This one okay. is a uh, a sock. <laughs> this one I thought was was, so it was is. pretty great, pretty uh, pretty amazing. Wow. So uh, yeah, okay. you too can have if you want to contact if you want to have your transmission. You know what? I wonder if there's if there's a trans edition. I was just gonna go there with this whole thing. There's got to be right. I mean, it's you got to be fair. There's got to be a trans edition of this transmission dildo. Someone asked this lady to make this i know that is the best part is someone requested that this That's be done interesting yeah so if you want your <laughs> transmission made into a, a dildo or if you would like a wow. a, a cock sock uh, <laughs> wait that's not what it's called is it no but that's what the other thing i showed you was, okay. little sock. yeah you can uh hit the link on the description below of the podcast oh or else you can do we really need to link to this i don't know should we we kind of have to, right? It's a nice thing to do. <laughs> Give her some business. Some guy. Oh my God. If someone, if she gets a sale and it comes from our site as the referring link. Yeah. I don't know. Great. I, I don't even know. It's going to be great. It'll be a thing. I can't think of anything I own other than my own penis that I want made into a dildo. I can't think of anything I own. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Not, not really I don't love something I've ever considered. <laughs> I don't love anything enough. To watch my wife insert it yeah, into her body. We can just stop. Right okay, you're, you're all fine. done? That's, yep. You're all done? All done. All right, that's it. Oh, do you want to do, we got to, let's do one more. Let's do one more so we're not ending on, uh, ending on, uh, <laughs> on, on, on dildos. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you want to do here? Uh, what you do pick I one. have in mind? Yep. Uh, let's do, uh, um, let's do the blinding light headlight problem. It's a little bit of a long one, but I think it's worth a, worth a look. You want to do a long one right now? Well, then you pick one, pick what you want to do. do One of the ones from my end. Okay, go ahead. Which I'm looking for Tesla. No Subaru. No Audi. Um, I got one for you. Okay, go. Someone has stolen an enormous wiener again, Chris again, (laughs) Las Vegas, catalytic Uh converter theft in Las Vegas Valley put the bite on the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile no. early Friday. No, they stole the catalytic converters off the The nostalgic 27-foot-long Wiener on Wheels in Las Vegas was in Las Vegas for a series of appearances on Super Bowl weekend. Uh-huh. It was parked in a lot of a hotel. 
uh, Thursday night when thieves apparently made off with the catalytic converter, a vital part of its emission system. That's sad. I wonder if there's like a, a human equivalent of a catalytic converter. At first, the crew couldn't get it started for a 10 a.m. Friday appearance at the Smiths at whatever place this address is. The vehicle was then towed to the Penske truck rental and installed a temporary catalytic converter. The Wienermobile crew, including uh-huh. Corn Dog Clara and Chad R. Cheese, oh then was able to drive to the 10 a.m. Wait, appearance. Is... So it's just anyone who drives Wienermobile? Is Chad R. Cheese? Name Chad yeah. R. I bet there's more of them. Okay. There's got to be like. Hot Dog Dave or something like there's got to be some other yes, options. Okay. Like Big Buns Betty. There's, there's got to be some stuff out there. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Joseph. Ken. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Heinz Harry. Joseph Rodriguez, parts administrator for the Penske shop, said he was a bit surprised to see the Wienermobile when he got to work. <laughs> a hot dog it's truck just sitting in his No shop. way, Rodriguez <laughs> said. Imagine like a huge hot dog in the middle of your bay. There's all these other trucks and you got to work on this. Rodriguez said the workers were able to find a catalytic converter that fit, making a temporary repair. Ordering the precise device for the wheeled wiener, he said, will take one or two months to get. Wait, it's going to take that long to get an actual Jake, catalytic converter? Quote, it's a huge problem. Yeah, I he guess. He said of the increasing thefts in the valley. It's been going on for a couple years now. The repair can be a challenge. In addition to the major gaskets, sensors, and ceiling, blah, 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 blah. This is a bunch of crap we already know about. Anyway, someone stole the catalytic converter off the wienermobile. That's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, on that note, we we talked about all stuff that we want to talk about and then wieners. And then some. Yeah. Overcrest Productions slash wieners. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not a thing. Not a thing. That one. All right, work. guys. What what do we got going on uh next week? Friday. Friday. What do we got going on Friday? Friday, we have an awesome history story. Uh-huh. It's uh it's explosive. Oh. All right. Well, I look forward to the explosive episode on Friday. We will see all of you guys. There. Take care.